Thank you very much for the applause beforehand. That's actually great. <laughs> um, my name is uh, André Wadenberg. Um, I'm a film critic for the daily newspaper uh, NSA Handelsblad, and today I will be talking to uh, Chin Lin Xie, who is a dir the director of the film uh, Flowers of Taipei. And I actually believe it's your first film, isn't it? It is my first film, yes. Um, and you're also, that's also good to know for the audience here, a film programmer for this festival. Yes. Um, which, which area? Proud to be, and proud to be. <laughs> which area are you covering for the film festival? Um, I cover. I used to cover German-speaking and French-speaking territories, and also um, in the Tiger Committee. But from this year, I think partly because I was making the film, I am now only covering French-speaking uh, territories. Right. So no Asian films. Never. Never. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think before we speak about your film, uh, we should maybe do a very crash course in Taiwanese history, if that's possible, in sort of three minutes or so. Yep. Uh, because it's very important, I think, to know sort of the colonial history, yes. uh, including the Dutch, who were there for, I don't know, a couple of months or so. More than that. M more yes. than that, yeah. And of course, the Portuguese were there, and the Chinese yes. were there for a very long time. The French the Japanese were there, were there. Yes. And it all ties together, um, I think, with the main theme, one of the main themes of your film is, is the search for a specific Taiwanese identity. Exactly. Um, so there had been, before the Second World War, there had been um, many, like André said, many people coming to visit our island. Uh, by the por Portuguese, Taiwan was called uh, Formosa, meaning beautiful island. It's actually not that beautiful, <laughs> but uh, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Um, so many Westerners came in the 16th century, 17th century, at the high time of you know the discovery, the world discovery. Um, they occupied some places in Taiwan. It was a little bit like uh, in Sri Lanka. It was never for a long time. It's just parts of the island that were occupied because it was a land that belonged to no one actually at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then gradually you had, about the same time, you had the Chinese immigrants in the, from the south of uh, tai uh, China moving to Taiwan, uh, escaping uh, taxation uh, or whatever reason. They, these immigrants, when they moved to Taiwan, they had no idea of going back to China. And so that constituted the first waves of immigrants uh, from China. And this core of uh, population is about 80%, 75, 80% of the population today. Um, before this population, you had um, what we call today the aboriginals. Those are Austronesians. They had nothing to do with the Chinese. They're not Han people. They're not Chinese. Uh, they are the, you find these people in Taiwan, Philippines, um, Guinea, New Guinea, all the way to Madagascar. You find these people, and they are, I think they are about 8% of the population in Taiwan today. So they are the minor, and they, w they were, of course, being suppressed by the Chinese, you know, be it the first waves of immigrants or the second waves of immigrants. Um, after the war, well, so um, 1895, um, China, um, in well, 16th, late 17th century, China took Taiwan as part of its territory for the first time. Actually, it was quite late. Um, I will skip the reasons. It's complex. But anyway, China took Taiwan in t uh, into its territory uh, scale. And, um, and soon, when China was at war with Japan, uh, China gave away Taiwan to Japan forever. It was not like Hong Kong was rented. It was a rental for 99 years, or Macau. Taiwan was given to Japan forever. So if the Japanese did not lose the war, uh, we would Japanese. all be speaking yeah. uh, Japanese today. So the Japan, Japan lost the war, and then you know about the Cold War situation started. Uh, the Communist Front and the capitalist, or um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. represented by the Americans. So Chiang Kai-shek was the nationalist government uh, who fought against the communists in China, lost the war also uh, during about the same time as the Second World War, but there was also a civil war in China. So he lost the war and he moved, he escaped from China to Taiwan. But he took a million people with him or something. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the missing 13% of the population I today. See, right. <laughs> so and they came and um, 
they took over the power from the Japanese, escorted by the, protected by the Americans. Uh, so it looked like Taiwan returned to its own people, but the Taiwanese, in fact, did not really consider the situation as such. And on top of it, uh, you have the Americans who had a, an American uh, military base in Taiwan. So we had a lot of GIs, we had a lot of uh, American culture pouring into Taiwan. So for a lot of Taiwanese people, um, after the Japanese, has, has, the Japanese have gone away, we did not we did not return to, to, to our home country as many imagined uh, because the government, Chiang Kai-shek government was very brutal with the local uh, people. Again, I skip a lot of details. Um, so well, I think for, only a, five minutes. Yeah, for <laughs> a, lot, a lot of Taiwanese, it was uh, a double colonization by the Chinese, but also by the Americans. And then came white terror period where uh, it was actually a dictatorship, so we had no rights, no, no, no freedom of expression. We had only rights in doing business, maybe like in China today. Um, so for the longest time, the Taiwanese um, could not express their feelings of, uh, of, of being suppressed as a population for, for centuries, and especially for their recent history. Um, they had to wait until late 70s, where you started to see bubbles, you know, things moving, coming out. And that's and actually where your film starts, basically. Um, yes, more or less. in the beginning yeah. of the yeah. 80s, yes, yeah. because the, the, the movement of the cinema came after all the other movements in literature, in pop music, um, in theater, in dance. Uh, in the other art forms, they have taken up this consciousness, this desire um, translated into art forms of finding their own identity, what is being a Taiwanese, what is... And especially you have to know also that because we were under dictatorship of a Chinese government that wanted to go back to China, so they imposed the Taiwanese people to consider themselves being Chinese and nothing else. Um, so it's all suppressed. Uh, so whatever you suppress, one day it will come out and it will come out in, in, in great force. So that's, that's, that's more or less the mechanism, yeah, yes. Yeah. And also interested in how it sort of ties together with your own uh, bio autobiographical history, because you were born in Taiwan, yes. I, I know that, uh, and but you also went away. Um, I, don't, I don't know uh, when you went away and yeah, I why went you went away, but... I, w <coughs> I went away, um, I went, why? This will become very personal, but... Okay, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, if it's, it's not necessary if you don't want to talk no. about it, but I <coughs> thought it was maybe... It is linked, indeed. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I was yeah. just joking. I think I went away also because I'm from um, double. I'm myself a mixed culture. I'm half uh, European, half uh, half Taiwanese. Um, so I think that in, indeed the theme of identity is something that uh, not only I live together with my people in Taiwan, but also happen in my family within myself. Um, I did not. I, I left for um, for my studies. I wanted to study fine arts, and I, you know, so I I wanted to. Uh, to go to a bigger place, I wanted to see the world. I was young, I was so so mm -hmm. I left. But yeah. um, but yes, it's it's linked yeah. with my personal story. Yeah. Uh, what I think is very interesting about your film is that it's not sort of a standard uh, sort of documentary about cinema in the way that it goes from A to Z, but mm. it's very much about the the impact afterwards of the Taiwanese uh, new cinema right. movement, looking back from basically the the, the now sort of 30 years ago. Um, and actually it's a film about tracing the, 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 the impact of the movement. Um, and you, of course, you, you, it seems like you have a lot of people in your agenda. Um, so <laughs> how many people <laughs> did you leave out? And can you say something about, uh, was, um, was this really your aim in, in sort of tracing the sort of history of Taiwan around the world, let's say? I think it's quite obvious in the beginning that uh, it was not possible for me. I'm not a scholar, so I would have been an imposter if I, um, I took the approach of making, like you said, an encyclopedia kind of documentary, trying to tell the story, exactly what happened 30 mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, first, there are many books already right. about it, so if you want to really know from A to Z what happened, then you, know, you can read books. Um, and also the second reason, like I said, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't think that was my role. I'm not an academic, I am not a scholar. Um, yeah, 
So I think what I what I could really do was to you know to to to, to let things come from uh, my emotions because my mm -hmm. I think I, there is a rich uh, resource in my emotion because I saw. Sandwich Man, The Sandwich Man, one of the two first films that launched the movement when I was 16. And it was the film that completely blown me away. And it was, it was, my, it was kind of awakening moments. Did, did you see it at that moment? In Taiwan, yes. Right, okay. Before yeah. I left. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a, a, a very crucial moment in my, my emotional, intellectual development and also my, my contact, my intellectual contact with my country, where I come from, my culture. You know, that it's, everything was kind of... Um, And on top of that, of course, my uh, youthful hormone, <laughs> you know, teenager, early teenager, a uh, very explosive um, moment. And when you, at that moment, discover at the same time uh, the truth of the recent history of your, of your country, which is completely hidden and, and uh, suppressed by, by, by the authorities, mm -hmm. uh, that together with your eagerness as a young adolescent in yeah. learning what you know, about life, about who you are and where you come from, what you... So, a collision, I would say. So, you also became an angry young woman. Exactly, right. yeah, very right. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, it was a very crucial moment in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for me, it was, uh, it was a good point of departure. Yeah. Um, and I think that explains why this film in the result uh, is, I, I believe, it feels more like um, a, an emotional piece than... Uh, A yeah. dissertation, academic uh, dissertation of. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I like it for that reason, actually. But yeah. Yeah. So um, that was it, it's very interesting. Um, I in your film, Tony Raines actually states that he thinks it's not really a movement, and your it's film. Right, yeah. yeah, and your film actually maybe proves it is. Um, but still, then again, um, from if I, I'm s I'm sort of have a academic background, so I know a bit about this this sort of movement. Not not more than you, but. Um, I see a, a couple of people missing, maybe, like uh, Ang Lee, for instance, um, made three Taiwanese films before he became internationally known. Um, and of course, in the end, there's Tsai Ming Liang, but only in the end. Um, can you say, say something about the process of selection um, and, and why, why Ang Lee yeah. is not there, maybe? Ang Lee, it didn't, it didn't An Lee came out with Tsai Ming Liang in 91. They mm. belong to the same generation, and both of them are 10 years younger than these people. Right. They, do n they did not belong to the movement. Uh, they came That's what you say. <laughs> no. That I think it's a, it's a consensus. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah okay. I am uh, 100% sure. <laughs> no, An Lee, and they were making very different films. Tsai Ming Liang is a different case. Tsai Ming Liang, more people include him mm -hmm. in the movement than An Lee. Because An Lee, already from the beginning, he was never in the... Um, He was always, he had always been in the orbit. He was already in the United States. Okay. And he wanted to, uh, from, you could see from his early films, it was never, um, you could see that it was a post new cinema film. Uh, for, for me, it was very obvious. Um, to uh, answer your other question, why letting the other people out? Um, I, it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't from the, I wanted to f end the film since the, p the, the overall topic is about the impact. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to, in the end of the film, come back to Taipei like you see today. In the end, we, we finish traveling, we, we wrap, and we go home, yeah. go back to Taipei. Uh, I want to end with the impact on the young the youngest generation of filmmakers today in Taiwan making films. Yeah. I want to see if there's anything left, you know, if there is a heritage, you know, are they, do they think, uh, do they consider themselves as um, the children descendants, of the children yeah, yeah. of this movement? How children much of the flowers of Taipei. The flowers, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, 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 how do they consider themselves, you know, uh, what's their relationship with this movement and etc. I did interview um, some uh, young mm -hmm. filmmakers Uh, but the result wasn't good, so I okay. decided not to use it. Not good for many reasons. Uh, again, after this, uh, you can come, I can, <laughs> we can discuss, but for many reasons, partly I was responsible, partly because I think there was a culture of, uh, of uh, respect among the Asians, so they were very cautious in what they oh say. Oh, I see, right, yeah. Um, because the, you, f you, ha you felt they had the intention of criticizing Uh, the older generation. I didn't feel the freedom I wanted to feel with uh, the other people I interviewed that you see in the film. Mm. I did not feel even even if it's if it's uh, glorious, 
but I, I want I needed to feel something sincere, something coming out of the heart. Okay. You know, and I felt more of a politeness, more of um, I think they were genuine in their respect. Yeah, but I that, think they were sincere that, in their that respect. That was about it, basically. But yeah. I think they yeah. were in intimidated by the by the subject the youth, also. The youth names of Aung uh, Shen and Edward Young. And they yeah. were intimidated by the occasion because they realized that this was something maybe that would stay or I don't know. I just didn't feel that it was uh, strong and powerful enough mm -hmm. uh, or personal enough for me to, to think that I should include. Uh, and also, I did not know. I, 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 I designed some kind of situation for them to be together to discuss and but the, the, the chemistry didn't work. Right, yeah. And that that's my share of responsibility. I didn't know how to make it work. So. No problem. <laughs> um, so, they, so I had to give up that, uh, that option yeah. because I had nothing uh, and I could not shoot forever. The budget was limited. Um, so I had to think of a solution then, uh, and then my solution came uh, that I would just very briefly come back to Taipei and directly to the point. Yeah. Um, because I imagine at this point, people would expect. I was kind of playing with the expectations at this moment. You but know. It, it's also interesting because Tsai Meng Liang says, I'm, I'm not part of that movement, yeah. I, I am an individual. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because um, in, in your speaking in terms of movement, if you speak about contemporary Taiwan and what's happening now, what is there a sense of what, what's happening now in, in ta Taiwanese cinema? Because it's sort of, it's also a bit of a bit of a sad film, I think your film, because it's ended. Uh, of course, there's you know the, the traces are there, and people talk about it, uh, but I don't get, I don't know what's really happening now. Yeah. Maybe maybe nothing. And maybe it's commercial or commercial again. Maybe. Yeah, it's very, it's yeah. very, it's mostly I commercial. I, I was yeah. afraid so. Yeah. It's mostly commercial, but I think it's healthy in the way that if you are not. Uh, I would take ta what Tsai Liang said. He said, a film is like a classic. It's there waiting for you to mature. Okay, sounds very pretentious, it's very Tsai Liang. But, um, but in reverse, I think uh, somehow it's true also that if you look at a film industry, a history of a film in industry, like before this wonderful ephemeric uh, cinema movement, there was a long history of commercial cinema. And I think... Um, it's a continuum, you know, it's, it's sometimes a break, you mm -hmm. need a break sometimes, but also I think uh, nothing is completely lost. Like Ho Xiaoxian had been making commercial films yeah. for a long time before he embarked on this uh, adventure with his uh, you know, colleagues. Um, many other people who worked in this uh, art, art house, uh, very arty kind of uh, personal cinema, yeah. they had all come from commercial cinema. Yeah. So today I think what's good is that um, in the 90s, for instance, Ho Xiaoxian mentioned that, after this movement, going into the 90s, Taiwanese cinema was really going down to the bottom and it was uh, almost a non-existing uh, industry. Mm. Uh, and so those who came immediately afterwards, apart from Tsai Miliang and An Li, uh, it was very, it was terrible. I mean, it was, there was nothing, nothing, really nothing. And for those few that were making films, uh, you had the impression that they were really walking in the shadows of the giants. Mm -hmm. You know, they couldn't get out of them. So they they were trying to make similar films somehow. So it's maybe a question of waiting for another 30 years and then... No, and now, okay. now since 2007, uh, there is a re renewal. Okay. Uh, there are, and you see a new, whole new generation of uh, filmmakers, they come out, they, uh, they really, they're not in the shadows anymore. And this is very good to see, you see progress. They're all making commercial films as a reaction, and I think it's healthy to react. Yeah. You know, because their industry had been so. But also, how Xiao Xian is making, so making a kung fu film now, I believe. Uh, wuxia, I would like to make uh, that wuxia correction. Film, sorry, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's different. Wuxia is with uh, swords, yeah. and it's more poetic. Okay. Yeah. Kung fu is uh, fist fighting. Yeah. Um, Which is interesting, because that's a commercial genre. In a, in a sense, so uh, and, and, yes. and I, I guess he's probably trying to do something different with it. But oh, it will! I assure you, next will year be it will be in Rotterdam, I think. But yes, <laughs> it, uh, I'm sure it will be very different. And yeah. it's uh, and Wuxia also st stands for something more literary, more. It's it's from the literary tradition. Yeah, it's an old uh, genre already existed in li liter literature. Mm -hmm. But Wuxia is the tradition that is more faithful to the liter literature. Uh, yeah. Making. Then again, Ang Lee also made a wuxia. Exactly. Crouching Tiger, Hidden exactly, Dragon. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, I think it's also important to talk about the style uh, of that of the movement. I don't really know if it's if you can talk about it in a uniform way. 
because South Ocean is of course different from Edward Young, etc. But are there some specifics you can yes, pin pinpoint there are, to? There are, yeah, this I can. Uh, I now I can academically be exactly. No. <laughs> I can tell you three points. Uh, there are three uh, three s three characteristics of uh, yes of this movement. One is the interest in common ordinary people, but this is not unique to this new wave. It's to almost all the new waves. Mm -hmm. We remember the si the in the 60s in yeah. the new yeah. realism. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, there is that that factor. It's it's mm -hmm. very prominent, very important. And again, it's by reaction. It's reacted to. It's the reaction to the propagandist films, you know, and commercial films that preceded uh, this cinema. Because in Taiwan at that time, there were only. Um, stars or uh, figures in the cinema that had nothing to do with their daily life. Yeah. So when they embark on this adventure, the, the thing they wanted to do is to reflect the reality. They wanted to show their world. Uh, so that was the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is um, so a humanistic, a very humanistic approach to their characters. So not only ordinary people, but also low class, usually low mm. class people, poor people, um, uh, and together with this humanistic uh, character, uh, this um, this uh, point, uh, there was also, it's also linked to the history again. Like I said, the atmosphere of Taiwan at that time, leading towards democ democratization. So we're at the pre-democracy era again. That was uh, the water was boiling, was about to boil. So it's it's all that mixed together. So there was. The concerns, deep and sincere concerns for, for poor people, for uh, oppressed people, because at the same time, we are developing economy. A lot of poor people in the country said they were left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, so concerns for these people, but also concerns for truth, for, um, um, for um, and this leads to um, a political awaken awakening. So this leads to the third point, which is, uh, the second, I would say, the second wave of the new wave, which is when Ho Chao Xian started to make, to investigate into history of Taiwan, when yeah. he made A City of Sadness, yeah. or before that, Good, Bye, Good, Good Man, Good Woman, mm -hmm. when he started to investigate into the recent histories of Taiwan, and many uh, together with him, uh, like Edward Young was doing uh, later, uh, Brighter Summer Day, that was yeah. investigating into the 50s, one and many filmmakers in the uh, yeah, in the first wave of the new wave, from I would say from 82 to 86, 87, 87 yes. Um, it was more about poor uh, people, about you know, real people, poor people, um, about memory of the childhood, uh, like Ho Xiaoxian's trilogy, about his memory uh, as a child, and also Zhu Tianwen, his scriptwriter's memory as a child, Wu Nianzhen, another uh, friend of his uh, childhood memory. And after that, he started to investig investigate the recent history of China. So these are the characteristics of, uh, of the new wave. Yeah. Among others, there you have also human. Maybe it's also good to mention that seven films from that period uh, are actually shown yes. here uh, as part on of the. 35, so on 35, so it's very film. rare. <laughs> it's very rare, yeah. Um, and my, my favorite discovery uh, is The Terrorizers by Edward Young, so go see it. Um, now it's a very special film. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, I think it would be the, 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 I think the most or the only, uh, strictly speaking, modernist. Uh, new wave film. That's why yeah. I thought it was very interesting. Um, there's also sti still some time for some audience questions, if there are any, I don't know, but uh, if you want to ask a question, step up to the microphone and... And shout into shout the microphone. <laughs> um, you can ask questions, of course. N there's always some, peop some, some person who has to come first. Yes, I think you want to yeah, say Yeah, so. there's You have to, yeah. <laughs> Okay, my question, uh, how did the uh, people in Taiwan, and especially young people, receive these movies? And if they know them, because I think in today the culture is going in one direction also in, in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong. And how do they relate to the movies, for instance, people of different ages in Taiwan? Um, the film was shown only once at the Golden Horse Film Festival. The film was there, but the distributor, because the film will be released in April, I heard, um, mm. in theaters in Taiwan. Uh, so the distributor, because it's a small country, and the distributor did, w did not want to show the film too many times. So there was only one screening. I was not able to go, so I, I wasn't there. But I saw the video. They, they, they taped the, 
the Q&A, and um, uh, the reaction, I would say, it's, it was the biggest hall. There were like, I don't know, 500 or six people in the, and it was full, so that was nice. So you show that at least people are interested. That's the first sign. I think people are interested in, in this. Uh, and there were a lot of young people, I was like, you know, f as far as I could see. Um, and the festival director was doing the Q&A, answering uh, questions, but he was more talking more than the, the audience. The audience asked, I think, only one question, and it was I didn't really quite understand the question. That so that's lot, my yeah. only experience uh, in distance with the audience. But I think in April I will know more. You sh it should be the other way around. You speak for 45 minutes, and then the director can go to hell. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, are there different? Yeah, you can step forward. Hello, I'm, I'm Taiwanese. And uh, as I understand in the movie, some of the director, like Hou Xiaoxian, he explained um, there's certain energy to, to for, for them to produce this kind of movie. Yes. And it was 30 years ago. And what about now? I think at least in the previous 10 years, as you mentioned, after year 2007, there's new kind of commercial movie in Taiwan. And at the same time, I think now the Taiwan society, there's a lot of uh, very dynamic um, ideas is happening. And how do you think um, this energy or in the coming five or 10 years, how do you think this energy will really um, in fact, or there's certain impact for the film um, industry in Taiwan? You have to give predictions. I am not a prophet, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and you live in Taiwan, I don't. So you should know more than I do. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, I, I cannot, and I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I, I see, I would rather keep a positive um, uh, hope, not because I, I am, um, I, you know, I'm positive for positive, no, but I think I, I do, when you look at history and film history, or history, um, many things are leading to something before you know, you know what is really going to happen. So I think it's dangerous to try to, to say, I know for sure what is going to happen. But what I see positive now already is that in the 90s, nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. And now you have a whole bunch of film, film, young filmmakers making all kinds of different films. They're all commercial, yes. But at least you, have, you see that they are out of the shadows. They do not want to imitate anymore. No. They do not... They do not feel the pressure of looking like them. You know, that's the only reference. They, they don't give a shit. You know, they just uh, they do what they want. They, uh, they, uh, they care about box office and they want box office. They want success. They want fame. Uh, you may blame that. Uh, and, and it's also all the films, from my personal point of view, I think many, many films are extremely shallow. Like uh, they, it, because these people they are from a wealthy uh, environment. Uh, like there's no more. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, and these people they they lived out of war or you know so they had a lot in them in their blood. You know they had a lot to share. Uh -huh. uh, and these young people we see, I think uh, w these people are like maybe people from Europe. I don't from wealthy countries. Uh, the rest is about talent and opportunity. I think. It's nothing to do again. Uh, um, it's nothing to do anymore with uh, with your background, with your history. With um, there's no more energy. There's no, no more. Not, there's no more nutrition to take from there. Uh, the rest is about, I think, uh, it, whether there's talent, whether there's opportunity. There's, there's room for one more question. If not, I, I have one. But uh, yeah, okay. You can no. You can take it. No problem. And uh, did you make some comparison with like? Um, for instance, Eastern European countries, because there was also a very strong line in the 80s in the new cinema, and there were like schools like quite similar, like in Hungary, Budapest school, there for there instance. There is always a new cinema always, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but uh, that if, you if you compare new cinema, yeah. there, there, there's a lot of similarity exactly, anyway. Yes. But yeah. Like I said, the but concern for a humanistic approach, so that's very, very universal. Uh, you know, wanted to reflect the truth, also very universal. There's, a, there's always, uh, this, uh, there is a basis, I think, to all the new cinema. There's kind of a DNA that is key in the, the, all, the, all the new waves. 
I believe. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, to answer to your question, no, I don't know much about Eastern. I know some directors, but I'm far from being an expert. So. More, uh, yeah, at the same time. Afterwards, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask my last question anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, from, from those seven films which are part of the Made in Taiwan program, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're not, not going to answer this, but is there a favorite? Of course. You, yeah, which one is the f your favorite? Uh, which one should we all see? But then that is very personal, I think. Of course, uh, but that's why I ask you. <laughs> Dust in the Wind. Dust in the Wind, okay. Yes. I, s I say the terrorizers, he says, dust in the wind, so go see both. At least see <laughs> these two, because, well, and they're very rep representative because um, um, yeah, Edward Young has a very intellectual approach to things, and Ho Xiao Shen is from the grassroots, and he, he, he in I think he invented really everything from with his heart, with his guts, with everything he had. He was a, he's the, art, he's the artisan kind of artist, and... Uh, and there's a lot of material, really, a, a lot of things, substance in, uh, in Ho Xiaoxian. I think I, yeah, I, I prefer Ho Xiaoxian over yeah. Edouard Yang. Oh, no, that's good, because <laughs> then we cover both, uh, both very important directors, so we cover them both. I cover Edward Young, she covers Ho Xiaoxian, so that's good. Um, and that's also good for, to end this, to end this uh, conversation on, I think, a good note. Um, I hope you go see those two films and check out the other films as well, if you have time. Uh, but also see the other ones, I'm sorry, because they're very <laughs> rare to be seen. <laughs> so That's true. <laughs> On this note, enjoy the rest of the festival and hope to see you again later at some time. And uh, thank you very much for talking thank to us. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. <laughs>